All right, this is Coach Gary with GLS Training and Go to Movement, and this is Recoded with Gary Scheffler, Recoded the podcast. And um, I got my guy Obi with me. He's been in town all week um, doing some doing some work and, and just um, kind of ended up falling into the certification a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> we, um, but, but, man, listen, getting, getting to know you and, and getting to spend some time with you and – you know, the spiritual side of you and all, man, and how you plugged into the word and things like that, man. It's It's been a pleasure and an honor to build this relationship with you and have you here talking to the kids and, like, just, like, you being here from a, um, just, uh, like, you know, it's hard to find people that come in and they interject themselves into situations that are positive. Most of the time it's, it's, like, none of their business situations or something, but you came in and, and just, and we're going to talk about everything. So, but, um, you know, welcome. And, and, and I'm glad, I'm glad that you came in. Uh, gee, I appreciate you having me here. Uh, it's been nothing but a blast. Um, and you're, you're right. Uh, I came in here humble. I'm a humble guy. I came in here, um, just willing to learn and soak everything in. So being able to be here and almost being able to serve, uh, it's something that, that I have a passion for. So being able to be around the kids, be around you, help them out any way I can, um, give them tips that I wish I had growing up or I wish I had in the sports world mm-hmm. has been, has been honestly a blast. Yeah. So, I mean, what I like to do is, is let you kind of tell us like how you got into football. Tell us your story. Like start from the beginning, little kid growing up. Uh, I, I know you're from Nigeria or whatever. Did, were you born here or were you born in Nigeria and came here? How, tell us how that all went. So, through. both of my parents are uh, first generation Nigerian. Um, my older brother and my older sister, we were actually born in London, um, North London, Islington, right outside of uh, Arsenal Stadium. So, you basically have Arsenal Stadium in my backyard. I moved here when I was three, uh, and I started playing football at the age of nine. I just fell in love with the game. I was an aggressive kid. I always got into fights as a kid. Uh, I just didn't. I just didn't know how to channel that anger. Um, so what? What better way to do it than to you know run and hit people? Yeah, right. So <laughs> put run and hit some positive. Yeah, <laughs> run and hit people. So when I was eight, I just really fell in love with the game. I started watching um, football. That was when LimeWire was back in the day when LimeWire yeah. was a thing. I would <laughs> download all the music. I, I yeah. would download music. I would download uh, different athletes. Barry Sanders was is my favorite athlete. That's why we're number twenty today. Mm-hmm. And so I'd watch him. So I told my mom when I was eight years old, like I want to play football. Yeah. My mom was like, Nah, you know. Did, did you have the the little square iPod? <laughs> The little bitty the nanos, one the nanos. Yeah, it didn't have the um picture on it yet. You remember, it came out. It was just a little bitty square. The iPod like, Nano. Yeah, it was yeah. just a little cube, and it held yeah. about sixty songs, yeah. and it was the greatest thing yeah. ever. So I um, Joe, where was I? <laughs> I uh, I showed my mom. Uh, I really wanted to get into football at the age of nine. Yeah. So I showed my mom the sheet, sign up sheet. I brought it to her. She, you know, she's. Full blown Nigerian. She just trashed it. She don't. She don't care. Whatever mm-hmm. she said, go. So she trashed it. You're not playing. That whole year, I was sick. Like I would literally find my way to practice, watch them practice, but not be playing. Imagine you watching what you want to do, but you can't do it. So now you itching to do it. Yeah. So that's kind of where it came from. By any means necessary. So I would literally just figure out how 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 can I play football next year. So I came up with a plan. Next year came, I got two sign-up sheets. Same thing. I brought it to her. Can you sign this? Bro, she threw it away. She was like, nah, you're not playing. It's too rough. I pulled out the second one. Like, I'm serious about this. Like, can you sign it? She had. No, she literally had no choice. Yeah. She, she just knew I had conviction. Yep. So she signed it, and I've been taking off ever since from there. And um, even down to that, there would be days where, my mom works two jobs. My dad works two jobs. That's where I got it from. Just, mm-hmm. just relentless. Whatever, whatever you want, you have to go get. Mm-hmm. There's nothing in life that's given to you. You have to go. You have to go take it with hard work, dedication. Because yeah. you've sacrifice. been in here eight hours, ten hours a day. Like you and I, I know how long I'm in here. Yeah. So you was in my hip the yeah, whole time. Yeah, exactly. So, man, that would be times where I would, 
not find a ride to practice. I'd have to walk like two, three miles to practice as a kid in Pop Warner. So you're around 10, 11 at that time walking to practice. So and where was that at? Where you grew up? I grew up in Framingham, Massachusetts. Yeah, so it wasn't hot either. <laughs> <laughs> not like yeah, I don't think I'm doing that over here. Walking in this heat. This no, but I'm heat. saying like I wouldn't want to walk in the nah, cold. Exactly. So I did that. Got that. Um, luckily, I moved to Grafton High. So Grafton High is a blue collar town. Mm -hmm. It's, I mean, it's a town right near Worcester, Massachusetts. It's really blue collar. I probably had like 150, 200 kids in my graduating class. Mm. So it's not a big football school. And that was a big thing. I wanted to go to college. I wanted to play D1. How am I supposed to do that in Massachusetts? Mm -hmm. You have guys down here who can play football all year round. You got fields everywhere, Florida, Louisiana, <laughs> Texas. You got fields. I got to compete with those guys. So what can I do to separate myself in order to make it? So I was just doing everything I could. Um, I ended up getting one offer to UConn. The only offer I ever got, um, shout out to Don Brown. He coaches at uh, UMass right now. Mm -hmm. He recruited me, um, gave me an offer my junior year. And I just ended up taking it. It only takes one. It only take it only takes one. And for anybody out there, yeah, let them know. For any athletes out there that feel like you need twenty offers, D one, SEC, uh, if you're if you're good enough, they're gonna find you. If huh? you're good enough, they <laughs> they gonna find you. That's all. All it needs is one. You don't need to be five star, four star, three star. You could be no star. So when you get to UConn, like, where do you fit in at? Like, how do you – you get in there and play right away, or do you have to wait your turn, or no, how did it go? I, so I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a man of faith, a strong man of faith. And mm -hmm. that, that situation happened, like, by the grace of God. So I get to UConn. I get recruited as an athlete. Really never played a lick of defense in high school. You know, I, I, offense is the way to go in high school. You mm -hmm. get the ball, you're flashy. Yeah, yeah. I get to def I get I get to college, and like you're gonna play safety. I'm like, what safety, bro? I the only safety. What you I played know, in high school? Uh, I played quarterback, <laughs> running back, quarter, a quarterback, six four quarterback in high school. Yeah, like you running back, bro. I played defense, but I played corner. Like I'm just yeah. out there, just just because you, you probably had a limited amount of athletes, so the real good ones had to play both ways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I get there, you're gonna play safety. But I kind of liked it because it was challenging. It's something new I have to learn. Mm -hmm. There's new techniques. It, it, it lets you mm -hmm. it lets you really hone in on what you're doing and study what you're doing. You have to be you have it's a craft that you have to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's it's technical. Playing DB is very is very is very technical. Yeah. You have to have good I, I think a, a lot of people lose that along the way because they get by with that athleticism yeah. in high school. So. Yeah. They kind of don't, they miss the part of, because because a lot of times, like, especially in our area, you'll have kids that come in and, and they they really, really good athletes. They'll have a couple of picks and then they get to college and they can't figure out the playbook because they never had to learn it. Yep. So now they're in an environment where at school, you're doubling down on school, right? And then you're doubling <laughs> down on this and they're like, wait a minute, I'm not the man no more. Because they they not letting me come because I'm in the wrong position half the time. Yeah, and and it's like you know, but but go ahead. I, <laughs> I'm gonna interrupt. This is this a podcast. No, no, we I, love just it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. We just chopping it up. That's yeah. how it should be. So I get there. You want me playing safety, bro? I'm behind. I'm I'm Tamir Brown. No, yeah, because UConn's DB thick. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm behind Tamir Brown. Shout out to Tamir Brown. I'm behind uh, Andrew Adams at the time. The, the smartest football player I've I've ever met, um, Byron Jones, first first uh, first round pick to the Cowboys. I'm behind, really behind him. Um, so I'm like, yeah, there's no there's no shot I'm gonna play. I'm like the fifth the fifth the fifth string, mind you. I registered in my freshman year, so mm -hmm. I'm kind of I'm kind of soaking everything in. Um, come second year, obviously I want to play, but I'm like, there's no way I'm gonna play. Like, there's no way. But at the same time. Because of my work ethic, because I was a guy even in school that always had a pen, a paper, good yeah. grades, attentive. I would just take notes like I'm gonna play. I would I would prepare myself like I was gonna play all the time. Um, so I would take notes like I'm gonna play. For, come first game, something happens to somebody, injury. Huh. Some, something happens. Something happens to somebody else. My, literally within the span of a week, a week You're and starting. a half. I'm starting when I was like fifth on the depth chart. Yeah. 
We're playing Towson. That was your second year. My second oh, year. So, so let's take a step back real quick because they got a lot of kids that'll listen to our show or they'll, they'll watch it or whatever, they YouTube, whatever. And probably they're going to watch it, especially because you, you currently still playing and all. But what the mentality side of it, the, the side of it that I want you to talk about is, is you're not playing. You got to wait your turn. You're sitting out. Because a lot of times, like we had Jameis Winston on here. This dude just walks in and he had to sit behind EJ Manuel. It, and EJ was like, uh, I think it was a first pick or something like yeah. that. But, um, you know, because you came out in the draft class with Kittle, right? Yeah. 17? Yeah, I, I, yeah, that, bro. That, that draft, draft class was sick. It, the DBs, yo, the DBs in that draft class, the whole draft was crazy. Yeah. But, yeah. That but, was, but what I'm saying is you had to wait that turn. Yeah. A lot of people quit. They, now you got the transfer portal. It's huge. Yeah. Like they jumping into the portal and they just going in because they're not playing. Yeah. Not because of no other reason, mm -hmm. but they because they're not getting on the field and they're not willing to wait. The the mental side of it, waiting your turn, knowing that even the second year you probably wasn't I'm probably not gonna play. Uh the mental side to me, it I mean, I, I'm humble. Yeah. So I came in there like these guys are already ahead of me. What 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 is it that I can do in order to in order to get ready for the opportunity. Because that's really what it is. You just want the opportunity. You shouldn't be sitting there pouting or why am I not playing or that, that, that's out of your control. Yeah. You can only, you have to look at it like I said, all athletes out there, you can't control the coaches not playing you. You can only control your mindset, your attitude towards it. Because if you have an attitude like I'm not playing, it's probably not going to come to you. But mm -hmm. if you have an attitude like, if I keep doing everything I'm doing and the opportunity comes to me and it presents itself, when that opportunity comes, I'll be ready. The Bible says he, the Lord beautifies everything in his time, mm -hmm. not your time, mm -hmm. not when you want it to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, we have to figure that out for gold. <laughs> <laughs> not when you want it to happen, but when he wants it to happen. So the whole time I'm not playing, I'm, I'm in a graceful state of eventually my time will come. What can I do as a teammate? Yep. What can I do as a teammate in order to help my team be the best team it could be while I wait my turn? Obviously, it's hard. It's frustrating. But at the same time, it, that, that, that's part of it. Life is hard. Life is frustrating. Mm -hmm. Nothing in life is just going to be easy given to you. So that's what I would say to those guys. You have to keep grinding and, and keep, keep at it. If this is something that you're really passionate about, you keep grinding. You keep at it. You look within yourself and find what can I do to improve, to, to potentially put around you too. Yeah, yeah, to put to put myself in that situation where I might have the chance to 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 um to play. Because you know nothing is given to any nothing is given to anybody. Mm -hmm. Nothing is given to anybody. What what um so you 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 get you finally get on the field at, at year two. Now, now it's 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 you you out there, and and you 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 know physically like what because you, you're a big guy yeah. like you six six right no six, six I wish what are you I'll be a ball player if I was six, six, five, six, 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 four? six six four six four six four yeah. what you weighing like two twenty two twenty in college at that time oh no no it's, no in college at the time I was like six four two oh eight two oh eight yeah yeah so you get out there I get out there bro. We we playing Towson. Get out there. Yo, I ended up having a game though. My yeah. first game. Yeah, I had like eleven tackles a pick. Oh shit. Yeah, my Man. first game. And then, bro, once I <laughs> eleven tackles a pick, I no, nah, I never looked back from there. So mm -hmm. that was kind of like the coming out of me. But at the same time, I was like still raw. I didn't I mean I didn't know what I was doing out there. Yeah. So that's that's when that's when it really started for me. Yeah, my, my first, my freshman, my uh, Russia freshman year, first game. So, so that 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 leads to how how long did you come out early, or you stayed the whole no, time? No, I stayed. I stayed five years. You uh, got your degree? Yeah, I have two degrees. I have a degree in sociology and a degree in human development and family studies. I wanted to do a master's, but that that dis what is the, dis the dissertation and all that? Uh, it's too much writing for me. <laughs> but maybe maybe one day maybe one day I'll go back. But that's. Uh, that's not my. That's not my forte. Yeah, that's not my forte. But I mean, you still got you know, like 
post football, you could pretty yeah, much exactly. do whatever you want. So, yeah. so that's the thing. Like th- those are things that I'm thinking about as well. Like going back to school. Well, like these these What's, things these yeah. things now that I could do. Uh, I was was interested in psych, and I wish I actually took psych. So that's like something I kind of want to kind of dabble into. Uh, like the study of the body, mm-hmm. like like Gota, which we'll talk about. Um, it's always been interesting to me. That's one of the other reasons why being here, dude, it's like a crash course. Dude, pe- stuff that people's learning for four years, bro, I've learned in a week yeah. from, from you and Rick, like legit stuff that's been that's been studied, proven, and tested. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's, man, it, it's tough because a lot of that school stuff is, it's not right. <laughs> Like we like you know and and like not getting into the go to part yet because I mean you got let's keep going with your yeah. with your with your career and all because I because you you you're here because you got hurt and, and not getting deep into the injury yeah. side of it or anything like that but like you at UConn you you get did you have did you get hurt at UConn? No, I played all four. Literally, I got hurt maybe my my junior year just some freakish. I just tackled a guy and like. My labrum just, just you know, tore my labrum. Shoulder or hip? No, it was my shoulder. Yeah, but that I literally, happens a lot in the but, DB world. But I literally was a four-year starter, didn't miss a game. I played 43 out of 44 games. Damn. 43 out of 44 games. Did, like, did not miss a game. Nice. Started when I was started every That's single That's unusual, started too. Started every single one. Now, we did talk about that because that safety and corner position – it's mostly it is a lot of shoulder stuff. They'll get the stingers. One thing too that happens that I, I see with that position is is guys in high school are using the shoulder a lot more, and they never really learn how to use their hands mm-hmm. in in the, in that process too. Yeah. And then they get to the to where the bodies are way bigger because it gets a little bigger every yeah, year. Yeah. yeah, and then they start they start coming in with the shoulder, and next thing you know, it's like they don't know how to use their hands. And you know, I, I know one of the things like that uh, when Lodano got up to SMU, they used the, their own hands a lot with the sled, like with their DBs and all to teach them how to hit. Yeah, they have to. bodies and stuff. Yeah, um, I feel like that's something in football that's that's not taught enough. Is hands. Mm-hmm. Everything is everything is hands. I feel like from hand placement to being able to to jam catch. Um, manipulate, control. I mean, look at D linemen. They're they're using their hands all the time. Yeah, safeties jamming. If you don't jam in the right place, you're gonna miss. Mm-hmm. Obviously, receivers hand hand fighting, catching. I feel like everything is a lot. Know, yeah, it, so lot a lot of it. it. Yeah. So you get you get you get drafts coming up. You went from one offer. Yeah. To so second round. So drafts coming up. My my draft process was kind of crazy. So drafts coming up. Um, I'm not really too too focused on things like that. All I'm focused on, like I said, is what I can control. So my senior year, how can I put myself in the best position to hopefully do all these things like the senior bowl, um, the combine, and obviously get drafted. So I think maybe one time, and I and I wouldn't pay attention to any of that stuff. Like I wasn't on Twitter. Look, where am I gonna go, I, bro? I was locked in on what I was doing. <clears throat> That's all I could control. I can't control um, these guys like Adam Sheffer are saying, I'm going to go here and here and this yeah. and this and that. Um, what were they saying, though? I, but I couldn't even tell you. You don't remember? I couldn't that. tell you. All I know is, like, the beginning of the draft or the beginning of uh, school, or that, that season I was predicted to go, like, 5-6. And I'm like, there's no way that I'm going 5-6. Like, that's not, it's not going to happen, bro. If I don't go in the first round, I'm going to be sick. But that's that was my mindset. Like mm-hmm. you have to put, you have to back yourself. You, as an athlete, as anybody, have to think that you're that guy. Yeah, because you may settle in your training. Yeah. Like, well, if I'm gonna be fifth or sixth, then you know your mentality changes. Exactly. And that, paying attention to that stuff will it'll destroy yeah, you too. Exactly. You know? Your confidence might go. So that year, I'm like, listen, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just be a dog, do whatever I gotta do, whether it be. Film study extra, field extra. Mind you, I set it up. I set it up in school, so I was tactical in what I did. I set it up in school where I knew that like I was only gonna have to take a couple classes. Mm-hmm. So in the summer, I was taking more classes. I was doing everything. So even when I did train, I didn't have to take no class. 
So I ended up every every game, and I set goals for myself that year too. That's the other thing too, as a as an athlete, as anybody anybody in life, you have yeah, to right. set goals because mm-hmm. if you don't set goals, you have nothing to shoot for. Mm-hmm. So one of my goals was 100 tackles, and I was trying to get like six picks. I ended up getting 124 tackles that Damn. year, and I had like four picks that year. So with just setting a goal and moving towards did you that, miss any? Moving towards, I missed two tackles. No, I'm and saying, I, did you miss any balls on the picks? Yeah, bro. You would have got the six? I would have got, I, I would have had eight. Oh. I would have had eight. Well, that's why you're not a receiver. Yeah. See, they knew yeah. what they were doing. You feel me? Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, so I ended up, I mean, I would hear a little murmurs here and there. Oh, he's da-da-da. Um, and then I ended up getting the senior bowl offer. Mm-hmm. That I was just really happy about that. Um Senior bowl offer, then the combine offer came. And once the combine offer came, I said, if I do what I need to do here during the season, I already know I could put up numbers. So if I can make it to the combine, put up the numbers, then there's no there's no possible way that I'm not gonna go the first round. Mm-hmm. It's not even it's not even in my brain. Plus, if I go compete at the senior bowl, show them show them I could play a little bit of corner, I can play safety, and I could cover tight ends mm-hmm. and backs. I'm I can do I can do everything. I'm versatile. It, it it's a it's a it's a no brainer. So I ended up going to the senior bowl, doing well in that, and then the combine, and then got drafted in the second round to the Raiders. Yeah. And 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 you go you go to the Raiders and then after the first year everybody's gone. Yeah. Uh, new staff comes in. New staff comes in. Um un- unfortunate, but that's just how that's just how, you know, sometimes how it works in the league and, and in college. Um, guys bringing their own guys. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's I, like I mean, listen, it, it's it's um, it happened here yeah, with Goda. Like I brought, but you know, I, I you got everybody got their team. You yeah, know what ex- I'm saying? exactly. So it, it's it's uh, I don't have no hard feelings. And honestly, like I said, I'm I'm bro, I'm thankful that I got the opportunity to go to the raid. That's a that's a a great organization. Yeah. Um, with a lot of history, uh, being out in California. That was super fun. Mm-hmm. Going to, going to them the Bay. fans are nuts, huh? Yeah, going <laughs> the to the dudes Bay. The shoulder pads. Yeah, and they, <laughs> yeah. Playing, being able to play in that stadium before they moved, that's something that that's that's like that's special to me mm-hmm. because, you know, obviously they played there after, but I was kind of one of the last, the last like teams to play in that in, stadium. Yeah, yeah. So so that so that was fine. I met super good friends there. Uh, Garon Conley, he won in the first round. That's my dog, man. He's funny. He's mm-hmm. funny as hell. So being able to meet different people, who, things who like that. Who was um, who was the quarterback over there at that time? Uh, it was uh Derek Carr. Derek Carr was yeah, there. Su- super super good guy, super good leader. Also a man of faith. Um, so it's it's definitely nice to be around guys like that as well. Yeah, they the Saints were talking to him recently, I, which I you know I've been having Jameson here for. Three months now, two months or whatever, and I I hope they um, they got to give James a shot. He deserves a fair yeah. chance. He's he's he handles everything so good. Like nah, he shot. does. Even yeah. even even being like, in here with him. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. He, he he's about his business. Oh, it's, ne- it's all positive yeah, with him. Like a- he ain't negative. He, he he you know he's like well you know whatever hand I'm dealt I'm gonna play them cards. And yeah. Like you saying, like you can't you can't change it. What you gonna do? Ponder on it and, and it'll destroy it? your nah, life. Exactly. Yeah. Nah, but he's a super good dude. He was in here doing the workout. I uh, got a chance to chop it up with him first time I met him. Um, like I like you said, nothing but nothing but you know those people like like ah, I don't want to be around him. And then some people like you just gravitate towards them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's one of those guys. Yeah. Even even I thought I was going hard. I'm like, uh, I gotta I gotta I gotta compete Step and catch up. up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He's one of those guys that bring that bring the that bring the best out of you. Those are guys that you want be to around. be around. And those are guys that you can't, that you want as quarterback as well. Yeah, guys that you 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 want to get on the same level, emulate. So mm-hmm. no, nah, he's one of those. He's one of those guys. And, and and you know, it's it's like anything else that you know you can't you can't want to be that guy and not practice it on mm-hmm. a daily basis. Yep. You know, and it, it's it's like you know it, you see it in in his work <clears throat> ethic. You see it in when he's around the gym and man, kids come through here. He talks to kids, and I got a. Uh, little cousin that had lost his, uh, his, 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 um, his parents. And, um, you know, he talked to him. He's, he takes time, you know, he, he gives back. And exactly. it, wh- whether it's, you know, monetary or what, however you do it, like 
your time is precious. So when yep. somebody takes time, it's it's kind of like what I said earlier with you. With when you when you come out there and them kids come in the gym and they and, and you like, man, listen, this gym's open all day. Like y'all not in here. I'm I'm here. Oh, you know, it's I was sleeping here. But um, so you you go and you, you go Raiders to. So I ended up going Raiders. Like I said, God works in mysterious ways. I got cut by the Raiders. I, I literally was was in sh- was in shambles for like a day. I would give myself maybe. I try not to even give myself a day. If something bad happens to me, I try to give myself shoot less than less than twenty four hours to, mm-hmm. to clear it. But at the same time, like I'm just always grateful for what I do have in those moments. What what that did teach me. So I, I just try to have that mindset. And then I ended up getting workouts with like maybe four or five different teams. Mm-hmm. Um, got to work out with the Patriots. And like that to me was like God literally opening, closing one door to open a better door. Mm-hmm. I got to go back home. I lived 30 minutes from the stadium back in my hometown. Um, so I get picked up by the, I get picked up by the <laughs> Patriots. I stay on there for, stay on that team for two years. End up winning um, a Super Bowl, Super Bowl 53. Um, Versus the Rams. So that was just incredible. And even being in that building, man, like people can say what they want about uh Bill as a head coach, but he he knows he knows football. He knows yeah. he knows what he's, he's talk- talked. He, he knows what he's talking about. And he puts he makes you a better player, not just from football, but about from from life. Teaches you hit the history of the game. He just makes you all around better, mm-hmm. better player. Mm-hmm. They have guys in there like Tom, got to learn from Tom. Tom's another guy that you feel like people got misconceptions about. Oh, how is he? The way you see him on TV, nice guy, like Jameson, like J- uh, like Winston, is how he is. He's the same guy in the locker room. Mm-hmm. Even I was like kind of afraid to go in there and like say approach hi, him. Say hi yeah. to approach him. He's like, hey, buddy, like, that's just how he is. Like yeah. you want guys like that, uh, yeah. Matthew Slater, Devin McCourty, um, got James White, guys like that in there. Um, it was just an incredible culture to be around because it, it taught me it taught me winning. It taught me um, attention to detail. Mm-hmm. It taught me you got to come in here be the same guy every day. The consistency. To be the best, you have to be consistent no matter what it is. No matter if you feel like, ah, I'm practicing this day or not, I'm tired. You, mm-hmm. you got to come in and put the work because mm-hmm. that's what separates greatness from, from literally average. That, um... That year, that linebacking call was pretty tough, huh? They, I think was it High Tower? High Tower. We had High Tower. We had um, uh, Bentley. Was Didn't he, they was, draft? Was did they draft? Um, did they draft the kid from Alabama? That I think he got there and started getting hurt or whatever. I don't remember. He was number ten for Bama. He he, he ended up. He only. I think he got in some trouble too. I, I don't know. They had, they he, they would seem like man. It, it was like every year they would they would win. They would be successful, and then they would just grab a diamond out of the out of the draft. That's like, how he does it. Or it's not, or it might not even be out of the draft. Even look, a free agency. Look at too. JC yeah. Jackson. Yeah, dude. It's like he almost like he he plugs these pieces in, and it's like putting a puzzle together. And it's like. I mean, he he does it all the time. But but there's certain there's certain like criteria. So one of those criteria is you have to be, you have to be um, versatile, mm-hmm. versatility. You have to be a, 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 a high, a high um, IQ, high so. IQ. Well, as a, in the as, versatility, as it has to be willing versatility yes. too, because like you could you could probably be a guy that could play anywhere, but you're like, nah, I'm a left corner. I play the side. I, yeah. I do like them dudes. Like you, you know, they got them guys out there. Yeah. Like, nah, I, I, this is what I do. Yeah. And then it's like, well, we need you to do this, and you're not willing to make that transition. Yeah. Then, uh, well, what's the difference between like? It's the difference between wanting to win, win a championship, and wanting to like perform, and and maybe not win a championship, but be good. And yeah. get, get and, the notoriety, and, and get like, the notoriety, yeah. and get and get and get the money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Is there's a there's a there's a big difference. And if you're willing to, like I said, I always use humble. If you're willing to humble yourself and just like buy into what you're doing, dude, it's a no brainer. And I tell guys all the time, like having a, a a big IQ, 
having a, a high IQ as a football player will take you will take you far mm-hmm. because in order to know schemes where your guys are gonna fit, I'm talking about if you're a safety, know the linebackers, corners, and and the and the D line. If mm-hmm. you're D line, no D lineman, no offensive lineman. Mm-hmm. Kind of put yourself in yeah. that frame so you could be an all around yeah. better better player, better know, athlete. Know the game, yeah, for sure. So so you 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 leave. Um, New England, but now the, the Raiders. I know. I know that was new staff come in, and the, you said your whole draft class left, and yeah. then you go to New England, and then they release you. Yeah. So I go to New England. They release me. Um, I ended up literally. Uh, that was twenty twenty. I set out literally twenty twenty. They released me three days after the draft. I was crushed again, bro. Crushed. But I just went back to work. Like, what what, what can I do to improve? What can I do to better myself? Um, that whole year, not knowing if I was going to be on a team or not, I worked out every day like I was on a team. Mm-hmm. I would wake up 5.30, go to the gym, work out, do whatever I needed to do every day consistently. Kept, I, the, kept the structure. Because I felt like the, the day, the minute I let up, and what I'm doing is the day that the opportunity is going to come, is the day that I'm not prepared, mm-hmm. and is the day that I'm going to go in there, you know, not be prepared, and then beat myself up because I wasn't prepared. Come to find out, literally, um, Christmas Eve, I get a call. So mind you, April, I get cut in April, May, June, July, August, September, November, this, no team. No team. I get a call. I, I get a call from from uh from the San Francisco 49ers uh Christmas Eve. Mm-hmm. And we want you to come out and do a workout. Now now was that to come on the team at that time? No, it was to for futures. Futures, okay. So you get a futures deal. So I get a so I get a futures deal. But imagine you being a in a frame of mind of every day not knowing mm-hmm. if the opportunity is mm-hmm. gonna come. But you're still working, like you're gonna get the opportunity. That's the difference between. That's the difference between you being passionate about what you're doing and right. you and you ch- and you chasing what you're doing, relentlessly, and you and believing in yourself and you having doubts and having things creep in and distractions creep into your life and kind of taking you off that track. Yeah. So in in this whole time, you got your little brother coming up behind you. Yeah, right? I have my little brother coming up behind me. So I'm watching him as well. I mean, I could I could go all day about him. Like just watching him improve. As did a, he have to go through all the trouble to play like like you did when you was little? No, because your mom he, just let him right in. No, uh, no, no, no. You yeah, my mom. I, yeah, I made the path. I made definitely made the pathway. <laughs> but he he came in right after me. He's man. There's not there's not man. When I just start talking about him, I start getting hyped. Yeah, and that's my like. That's really my guy. Like, yeah, I yeah, yeah. Like, So, watching him develop as a player and his mindset, I'm like, there's no way. Regardless, if I went to the league, there's no way that he's not gonna go to the league. Mm-hmm. Even in high school, he's taking notes. Oh, I'm talking to him about film. He's oh, in three by one, they're gonna do this route, and two by two. Mm-hmm. I'm like, mm-hmm. bro, if You're I giving did that, him everything you got, yeah. But if I did that in high school, I would have been a, so watching him do it and him actually take to it. I'm like, bro, he's gonna be he's super, as a freshman. So now he's prepared for college. Yeah. Now he's prepared for the league already yeah. as yeah. a freshman in high school. You know what I'm saying? So watch him go through his process. How get, far behind is he behind he's, you? He's five years. So five years. So yeah. you. You go through school. He's just he's getting recruited while you getting drafted. Yeah, and he just he just soaking it all in, bro. So oh, what, how's your mom feel now? Like she almost shut all of this yeah, stuff down. Yeah, bro. she nah, she she she's. It, it, I can understand why. Oh yeah, but Mom's, she's nah, but she's like ec- ecstatic now. Yo, oh, my son's. A, yeah, yeah, she's proud of yeah. y'all, dude. She loves y'all. No, nah, and I and I do it for her. I do it for my yeah. family as well. So. Sure, yeah, sure. You know, it's it's like I look at y'all now and 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 knowing y'all, and um, you know, I got to spend some time with your brother too, and um, it's almost like you know, you look at like these families, right? Like they got the Kelseys and they got the Mannings and they got. The, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm all 
right, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have enough time to figure it out. <laughs> but, um, you know, and it's like, it, it's, you see, you see these families and all, and look at the Mannings. Like, Cooper was, Cooper could have easily been in a, maybe in the league, and, and now he, he comes into a mentoring role. And, and I mean, you've had, you know, like we talked about, you had your injuries and stuff, but it, it, um, you 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 giving it back and you want to give it back and you like hey don't miss this and don't miss that and do this and do that yeah. like you become that that yep. that you know like and that's all part of your mentality and your attitude because it could have been like man screw football you you yeah. know what i'm saying like you could have had a mentality like that because of you know it's it's almost like man it, it's almost unfair like you you, you got to get hurt and you got to go through these things and you and and then that kind of like you know you you what happened with the 49ers though you you get released I get from I there? get I get there I'm there for maybe shoot I start what is it March March you start kind of workouts mm-hmm. I get there in March uh, uh uh like in a week a week into workouts a week into workouts I go I go back home to watch watch Ifatu. The draft process of Difatu, mm-hmm. and I mean, I just get released. So I'm yeah. there for a week, and I just, I just get, I just get released. But even going back to what you were saying before we continue about um, giving back, no, I feel like at the end of the day, it's it's part of my purpose to to give back. If I have all this knowledge, what 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 good does it do to keep it and not and not share with other people, and not let not let people know what I went through and what helped me and what not to do. I feel like that's that's my job, you know what I'm saying? To want to give back, um, and I try to do that in the, the 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 best way I can, and as frequent as I can. And in do, and in doing that, it actually brings me joy. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? To watch them listen to what I'm saying, soak in what I'm saying, because I know from my experience that it's gonna help. It's gonna help a younger kid, you know. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Um. It, and and you know I always say like you can't you can't keep it if you don't give it away. Yeah, you know it's it, it, I don't say it. It's been taught to me. Yeah, you know. Um, but so you 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 jump. You went XFL USFL. No, so I ended up going to the um. So that happens. Then, um, my agents like you know you can do uh, you're invited to rookie mini camp. With the with the Eagles and oh, yeah, I'm yeah. like I'm like oh let's let's ride so I'm there for three days kill it I'm like they're they're probably gonna sign me tomorrow you know that's how that's how well I feel like I did and they're like stay in shape um, I end up leaving they said stay in shape so I'm t- I'm gonna stay in shape what year was that twenty 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 one twenty one twenty one so, COVID hits. Yeah, no, COVID hits. 19. Yeah, 19. So 2021, I get to camp. Uh, I'm in camp. Maybe they they bring me in a week after I uh, get to camp. And then I'm there for a week. And I, I literally just literally there for a week and tweak, tweak my hammy. Yeah. And then I'm there. And then I get released. Then after that, I go to the USFL. Even Even that opportunity was like, um, kind of, kind of through faith, because I get released in 2021 in December, and I'm like, damn. I mean, in uh, July, I'm like, damn. What am I gonna do? Am I gonna make another team? This and that. So I'm just actively, actively praying, like I'm gonna make another team. Mm-hmm. I just can't, gotta keep doing what I'm doing. Then I ended up getting um, signed to the USFL. And then that was 22. Yeah, that was that was twenty. So every year you've been somewhere. Yeah, since, every since year I've 17. been every year I've been somewhere. But like I said, that 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 comes from um, me knowing, you know, the blessings that I've had, mm-hmm. and me understanding that even though I'm in this position where you know things aren't going my way, I'm still remembering the 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 grace and the mercy that that God's given me mm-hmm. as he's given, he's given me opportunities. So I understand that there's there, there could be another opportunity that comes my way. So let me stay ready and prepared for it. Yeah. So 
you you so I remember this like this. You, your brother and 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 uh, Dre are here. Dre, yeah. And um, they you flying home from somewhere as you so, were somewhere something uh, happened. So peep. Okay, so, let's so, go. So, let's so get last, it right. so, so next, so so last year, last year around this time, last year around this time, he tried to hit me up because he know what I'm going through. He know I have little Nicks. You know what I'm yeah. saying, Nicks. And I'm looking for everything. I'm <laughs> out here uh, doing all types of different stuff. Chiropractor. Uh, Anything to get and, right, and bro. Anything, anything to get right, and I'm, I'm like not getting right. I'm still tight. My back, my back, is, my back, <laughs> chronic still, back pain. Right? My, yeah, my back's still going crazy. Like, and I, it's not like I had, I had no back injury. You know what I'm saying? It's not like yeah. I had like, yeah, it came but, from but, nowhere. But, but it's just, yeah. but it's just tightness. I, but I've, I've always been wound up and tight. Now yeah. I know the reason. You know what I'm saying? But even, a, even in college, wound up tight in my front chain, doing all types of crazy stuff, lifting. Squatting 400, 500 pounds yeah. multiple times, 30 times, getting on the hack squat, doing 20 reps, all types of all types of just nonsense. Yeah, right? I mean, you go in the weight room. It's almost like, too, like, because I've, I've, <laughs> I've worked with you, your brother, because your brother's strong, uh, Adafe away. Like, I've had some Nigerian guys come through here, and it's like y'all have a, a – a different type of strength too. Like there's just a natural strength yeah. that's there. Right. And then you go into the weight room and it's easy to, to, to even make you weight room strong too. Cause, yeah, cause yeah. like you walking in lifting more than yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. That's so, so <laughs> just know Nigerians, we, we, we them boys, them Niger boys, <laughs> we them boys. You feel me? <laughs> so you go in a weight room knowing so they go, take, they actually take it from you. Yeah. Huh. So I go in there. I just get, I, I feel like I'm getting like stronger, but I'm getting like tighter at the same time. More yeah, bound less up. Less athletic. Yeah. More bound up. I'm getting tighter and stronger, but I'm just, I'm, I'm losing flexibility. Mm -hmm. I'm losing, um, I wouldn't say durability in the sense endurance because my muscles are just so tight. Yeah, they're not they're not lengthened. They're just tight. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I'm doing all that, getting tight, getting tight, getting tight. Then I just just start having these issues. You know, lower lower back pain, things like that, tightness. So if last year, if I was just like, oh, Andre told me about this guy that's been studying how people walk and cr this this is how it's pitched to me. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just going to this guy that's teaching people how to move and studying movement and helping people like move better and um just be more durable, um reduce injury. But th the thing, the thing that caught my eye, like in like just I don't know my my ear was like always oh, he's, he's teaching people how to like crawl from like he's, he's studying babies and teaching people how to crawl from like from from um a, a first a first level a first level like entry. No, I'm like teaching people, teaching babies how to crawl. Like what? But let me go see what this is talking about because at this point, bro, nothing's helped. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing's helped me, like be like t sustain what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So I get down here, I do the assessment. I'm literally down here for a day. Do the assessment. Um, the minute I get in here, you start talking. I don't know. Something in my brain was like, Nah, he he know what he's talking about, bro. You know what he's talking about. I don't know if it was a conviction. I don't know. It was it was a conviction. Number one, it was a st the studying. If some you have someone that is convicted uh, has conviction, then then is also studying what they're talking about and has proof and evidence about what they're studying. Then it's like okay, maybe, maybe this guy is like. He, he's a little bit delusional because, you know, no, Pete, yeah, no. He's, he's a little bit delusional because, like, he believes what he's saying. But what he's saying is complete bullshit. Mm -hmm. But then you have a guy that believes what he's saying. Then he has c case studies, you know, hundreds of hundreds. Yeah, I showed you the iPad. Yeah, hundreds of hundreds, thousands, thousands of case studies. Then, you know, there's a map to it. Then he's showing you athletes that have actually moved this way. Athletes that we look up to that are literally the greatest of all time. Ed Reed. Uh, Tom Brady, um, Jordan, all Serena, Vanessa, all these athletes, and they're literally moving the same way. I'm like, yeah, I'm in, bro. Just I'm in. So what? Do, what do I need to do? Yeah, I was in. What is a day? Yeah, a 
Did I go home that day? We did the eval. I think you flew in in the one one oh, night, dude, I, and I, then I, you stayed the next day and yeah. left that evening. Yeah, it was left, like left. you only was able to do a session. Yeah, left left yeah, that evening. Like the eval and the session, you got the video and and you were gone. Yeah, left that evening. But I'm the type of guy like if if I feel like if I if I feel and I know someone's really has my best interest at heart and they're trying to help me, I'm going to believe them and at least study it myself and, and, and practice what they're saying. Mm -hmm. So after I left, I'm practicing what you're, what you're saying and, and this and that. And obviously these movements are, are, they're very technical. If you're, if you're get, if you're getting it done or, or you're practicing it from the wrong people, from people that don't know what they're talking about, mm -hmm. It's, it, number one, it's not going to work. And mm -hmm. number two, you need multiple sessions of what you're doing yeah. with, with high repetition. Yeah. So I went home because I've only been in for one one day. I went home. I'm trying to myself. It's not uh, it's not really working. But at the same time, I am still I still know it can work because I've seen it. Mm -hmm. But I'm just not doing it right. So literally, I, I know about Gota for a whole year. Like up until three months ago is when I really started taking it seriously. And then I'm like, it's I know... Some stuff is working, but because I was only there for a day, let me go back to the guys that started this. Because at the end of the day, if you don't go to the people that started, yeah, that started it, something's lost in translation yeah. along the <laughs> yeah, way. It's yeah, like playing yeah. telephone. Yeah, let me go back to the people that 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 know that studied it and started it, started the movement. Let me go back. So being back for this week, bro, I've learned more than this week than I've. It's, it's been it's been night and day. You've activated my glutes, lengthening my hamstrings, mm -hmm. being on the uh, the ball of my foot, not being not pronating, not being inside ankle bone low. Yeah. All of that stuff is definitely significantly improved my performance, my recovery, my cardio. Mm -hmm. It's like because you're doing all this stuff right and you're using the right muscles the right way, you don't need to exert energy. Using different mm -hmm. muscles the wrong mm -hmm. way. I'm not using my You're groin. You're creating efficiency. Yeah, I'm not using my groin to power my glute. Well, that's what that's what my glute's there for. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So, I mean, it's just, dude, literally no back pain, no no back tightness. All the length, I'm still pulling length out my back. Yeah, you gotta. Yeah. It's a progression. Yeah, you gotta realize you you erasing or you're undoing years and years and years of bad movement, the neurological it, patterns. Yeah, that you. Habits, we we are habitual people, yeah. right? Like what we do, we become. And um, you know the, the the you know if you if you front chain dominant, you take front chain dominant everywhere with you. You yeah. sit front chain, you you you, you walk front chain, you, and and you a guy that needs to be back chain. You an athlete, you a safety, you know. And it's it's like we we try to restore that pattern that we know is ideal. But like you said, you got to give it its due diligence. Yeah. You got to give it an opportunity. It's like, you know, I had a guy this morning reach out to me. He's like, man, I'm, I'm, uh, I still feel my ankle though. Like, man, I, my hips feel better and stuff. Like some things that I didn't realize mm -hmm. were wrong. Like yeah. they're, they're, they're getting better. He's like, but I still feel my ankle. I'm like, well, who's your coach? He's like, well, nah, I just did the free PDF that y'all gave. And I'm like, Dude, you don't have a, you didn't get an eval done. You don't even know what's going on with yeah. your ankle. Like you gotta you gotta immerse yourself into yeah. it. You know, it's like anything it's else. Like it's anything, like yeah. yeah, it's like you know a kid that's like oh I'm failing biology. Well, did, did you talk to a professor? No. Well, did you did you did you do anything extra? No. What you did? I took the test. Well, of course you, you're failing. You, you like, didn't study. You didn't practice. You didn't you didn't do your own you didn't do your own study guide. That's right. And and the thing is is that. In in life, in general, in life, is you can't just walk through life taking everybody's word for everything. Because if not, you're going to end up Wait. basically by who what you surrounded by. Yeah, and not, and not, and not where you want to be. <laughs> yeah, right, for sure. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you go, we and we trust, right? We trust the medical community. We trust the strength staff. We trust the medical trainers. We trust the coaches and all of that stuff. But listen, you may have a guy that teaches a T-step, right? Yeah. Why does he teach a T-step? Because all his athletes are front-chain dominant. Yeah. So it's the most efficient way for them to come back up yeah. without destroying their Achilles. So he's like, nah, the T-step's the way to go. Yeah. And then you get a bunch of dudes that can bicycle kick, and they make his DBs embarrassed. <laughs> you, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Or, 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 or just do a single step or whatever. And, and 
we become patterned by our environment. Mm-hmm. So if I do have, you know, I say it all the time, you can't take a, a, a mule to a horse race. Like, you, you know, it's, it's, it's like, but if you, if you put a mule in, next to a, a horse, it's, it's just it's way different, you know? Yeah. But, um, so you, you get now, where do you go from here? Cause you done came in here and it's like, you don't sat through the cert. You don't, you don't got it big time. Right. Like, yeah. you know, you don't kind of figure this thing out. Sure. Where I go from here, uh, honestly, in my day to day, even I already started doing it, but now that I have knowledge about what I'm talking about, like legit knowledge, cause I've been here, uh, gone through classes, um, listened to the, the people that literally created it. You, you, Ricky, um, you know, Ricky, it's number one. I keep doing the movement, um, keep practicing the movement, because at the end of the day, I do know I'm gonna get another opportunity to play. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm ready to play. I feel stronger, faster, more durable, uh, more stable. How much weight we lifted? More, more not a single weight. <laughs> <laughs> not a single, not a single way. I'll do a twenty minute. I'll do a twenty minute go to movement exercise. Be cooked. Yeah, cooked, bro. Feel it everywhere: hamstrings, glutes, calves, ankles, and those are all the back. Those are all the muscles, scaps. Those are all the muscles. As an athlete, you talk about knee bend. Like those are all the muscles that you need. You need to be able to literally get. Get your get your femur back back into your hip socket, like yeah. Activate your glute, but well, I don't know if it's just me, but I I just like to study the body. So yeah. when when you start talking about being able to being able to coil and load, you know, sink your hip yeah. back, tap into that neuroplasticity yeah, yeah. and all, all, that all of that. Yeah. I'm just like, nah, I know exactly I know exactly what he's talking about because I also speak the same language. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it's really getting back, get, getting back to that. Obviously, like I said, I know the opportunity will come. I'm ready. I'm prepared. I put in the work. I continue to put in the work, but also educate other people on how to move better, how to move more efficiently, um, how not to the next day wake up groin feeling like it's about to fall off. Uh, yeah, the way you wake up in, in the screaming. fifth wheel, it feels a lot. Yeah. Like, you don't have to, like, a, a lot of the, a lot of people, one of the first things they say is, is like, man, I didn't realize how bad my back was until I started to decompress. And like, once you open up, and it, it, it's like, you don't have to live like that. And then how many people you think's out there like, well, that's just part of sports. Dude, it's not. And then you find out it don't have it's, to be. It don't have to be. It's crazy. One of the one of the big things, man, that you know, I think that the, the listeners and all need to hear is like, uh, you know, spiritually how tapped in you are is is um, it's a blessing, man. Like I said, like you know, I told you the other day, I'm like, I wish you could just stay here, yeah, because I feel like we need you, yeah, because because there's a there's you, you and I'm not just saying this, dude, because I don't sat up here and like I I ain't never told nobody like like. You, you, like the God element, and and spiritually, and and like that's never you never mad, or like nah, I can't, I can't, God, like I can't, I literally, I, I physically can't get mad when number one, I, I truly believe that God died and rose from the dead and died for my sins, right. So if he did, if he ultimate com- sacrifice. if he committed the ultimate sacrifice, how how can I be angry? How can I be mad? How can I be? How can I be? You know, sad for the most part. All I could do is be grateful. It would be selfish. It, it, it literally. It's, yeah. So um, um, and saying that it's just the one the, the big piece that has helped me get through everything I'm talking about from being knocked down, to getting back up, knocked down, getting back up, is is literally God in the word and having some type of having a, a moral, a moral code. I feel like nowadays everybody turns to something because they have no moral code. Yeah. They don't understand that there's some, that, that, that God is three in one, you know, the, the, the spirit of God and God himself loves you. So therefore if, if, if he loves me, 
I don't need to turn to all these different things for to to, to receive love because mm-hmm. I because I know I'm loved and because I'm loved, I want to be able to share that with other people. You know, we are God's image. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? He lives in us. So in order to do that, is to share with other people, and that's really that's really literally what I've been doing. And and I. <clears throat> Listen, I, I pride myself and and, and and I know like Donald and and Rick and and you know what we've done with over the past year with cleaning up Gota and cleaning up GLS and different things like that is is we are spiritually led. Yeah. And 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 Gota has has we you know, I, I used to say it like one of the big things was is we we would sit you know, the, before it was like at the start of the cert, it's like they don't talk about politics and don't talk about God. Well, guess what? Like God needed to be in this. Yeah, the yeah. politics shit you could keep. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 like I, man, you know I gave you my book. Yeah. I gave you a copy of it. I, I know you started, I started reading. I started reading it. Yeah. And and like yeah, I, I I it's only God. Yeah, it's literally like you don't come from where I came from and be given the opportunity for a second chance and not only a second chance but a platform mm. to 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 pass on his message see see the the, the 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 and I've been learning this man because I've been so plugged in to the word and, and back into church and things like that and <laughs> it, it's, it's funny because I went to church because I was like, they're going to brainwash my daughter. My daughter's into the youth ministry stuff and all of this stuff. And I'm like, Emma, God bless. I love Emma. And, 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 and I go over there. I'm like, I'm tell Fallon, Fallon, I'm coming over there and, and I'm going to shut it down. Like they're not going to sit there and brainwash my kid. <laughs> and now I'm at church without them. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm in there and, and, and it's like, so like, but, but like, what happened was is she brought the kingdom of God into my home and th- that recruited me back in the yeah. church. And when I got in there and I plugged back in, like, and I started looking back at like I'm a homeless drug addict to be given God's pattern. Right. I'm telling you like, this is like, this is the dude. I got. I had a lady call a gym the other day and say, "Is this the place that heals people?" She didn't say that fixes knees. She said that heals people because there's something inside of having knee pain, back pain, and all of that stuff that restricts you from life. Yeah, and you can't go out and enjoy the loved ones that you have. It, it, it cripples you. Yeah, dude. And then people people are look literally looking looking for answers. Literally looking for answers, dude. I had a guy call me up one time. I did a recode with him. He's like, "Dude, I'm 30 years old. I'm in the worst pain of my life. I will not be 40 years old like this. He's gonna you. kill himself." Go to, <laughs> like, it's it's and it's like like people's like, "Oh, you're gonna bring some guy." I I, I said it, and we had Keedy Black on here, and it, you, you know, twerking and all of that stuff. Yeah. It all kind of originated here, yeah. or whatever. And, and 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 she taught me a big lesson because she was like like. Like the drug thing that you had, the music industry and what I was in and what some people look at it and what it thinks represents. Like God said, he's going to use you for what he needs yeah. and, and, and to get his word out. Like I went into that world mm-hmm. so I could speak on that world because yeah. my credibility will take somebody from that world to and where I'm at yeah. today. Yep. And it's not even about GOTA or training or anything like that. Like... Man, I can motivate anything. Yeah, that's that's a fact. Like, like, like when I get in front of, I know what my gift is. Yeah, and he said my gift will make a place for me at his table. Yeah, that's true. And I, I and and it's like people come around, they spend a little time, and they like, I get it now. Yeah. I understand why he's like he is. Yeah. No, that's true. But even even down even when you talked about uh, <laughs> spirituality, one of the things. The, one of the Bible verses that has helped me stay so strong and solid is a Psalm 125, 1. It says, those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. They cannot be easily shaken or moved. Mm-hmm. So no matter what I'm doing, no matter what's going on, I know if I trust in, if I trust in the Lord, if I trust in God, 
that I can't be easily shaken or moved. Mm -hmm. there, there's nothing that's going to be able to, to, to disrupt me or discourage me it's because I have, because I have God on my yeah. side. I already know what he said about me. He's, he's told me, I, I know the plans I have for you, plans mm -hmm. to conquer you, plans to not, to, to not harm you. You know what I'm saying? Plans it's to give a, it's you hope a, in the future. It's a great place to rest in too. Bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? It, to be so comfortable when, when, when like, dude, I, I don't, I don't, I don't, man, all the things that I worried about and stuff. And I, I'm a human. Yeah. Like you're going to have little moments where, yeah. and then it's like, you just got to revert. That's why staying plugged into the church and staying plugged into the word and staying plugged in. You walk into the gym, you look to the right, they got a table sitting in there with a Bible on it where Donald's sitting in there reading. And he's like, man, gee, I don't know if I should be doing this stuff right here or not, uh. because I'm like, bro, I, like you, you got to. Yeah. Cause it sets some things we do are not made to draw you in. They made to keep you out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it sets boundaries with people. Like if you ain't with this go. That's a fact. Like, no, like, that's, like, that's, that's like it's not always no, to bring you in. Yeah. It's to keep you away. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even, honestly, hearing you say that it, 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 it does, it, it does. It just shields you from, from, from Bullshit. things. Yeah. yeah from, that, from things that aren't, that aren't, on your wave, on yeah. your beliefs, aren't things that you like. Wanna... Like people, will, they, you know, like like they're gonna have somebody watch this and they're gonna be like, yeah, they sitting up there talking about God and ain't this God. And, and, and all people, good that we don't want you here. And there's gonna be people <laughs> that tap in. Oh, then share with other people. Yeah, that are you know what I'm saying. They're gonna have somebody that don't believe that's gonna give it to somebody that does believe, and we're gonna bypass that person. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna happen like that. Like yeah, they were over there talking about God, and then they gonna come over here. Hey man, so they saying yo yo like oh, this way. I want my kid. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. I want my kid over here. I don't want him over there with that guy. You know, but um, I you know listen, we we um, we can sit here and talk all, all day, day but, for real. You know, I, again, man, it, it's a pleasure having you around here. You have a home here. You are welcome here anytime, and um. You know, I appreciate you coming. Uh, I appreciate you, honestly. I, I consider this uh, family now. Uh, you, Rick. Honestly, anybody that works that works with Gota, the mm -hmm. movement. Um, like I said, I, I feel like I strongly believe that it's for everybody. It's for the elite athlete. You're the top of your game. It's for the, the old. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be yeah, right. that guy, but it's for the old lady, old man that literally 60, 70 can't. Feels like they they can't even play with their grandkids. Mm -hmm. For the the thirty forty year old dad that wants to run around with to play baseball with his son. Yeah, dude can't even throw a baseball with his son. Imagine it's for the <sighs> it's for the it's for the kid that's that's in the situation where they they have an injury and they feel like they need to go to get surgery. Sur th things like surgery should be the last resort. It shouldn't be the first thing that yep. you jump to. Yeah, like everybody's so quick. That should be the last resort. It's for those kids, those parents that that want a way for their kid to be able to run around, not be in pain, not be sit, sobbing, because then it then it puts stress on the parent as well. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's for oh, that, I say it all the time. There's there's no it, it, the the strength coach, the coach, the trainer, the medical people. They don't have to go sit with that kid for six or eight months while he's going through an ACL repair. You know what I'm yeah. saying? The kid that's got 40 offers that loses everything because of his knee injury yeah. or something like that. You know, there's kids that had 40 offers that ended up with one. Yeah. You know? And it's like, but, um, you know, I know it's not the last of you. Nah, I, I know nah, you're going to have other opportunities, and I know that wherever you end up, whether it be in the NFL, the USFL, XFL, or coaching, or doing psych work, or doing whatever it may be, or back in school, the people that are around you are going to feel Obi. Nah, I appreciate that. You know what I'm I really saying? Do. I think you're a special dude. I think you got a lot lot to give the world, and I hope you don't keep it. I hope you give it away. And, and, nah, and I got uh, to. Always. But, um, I got to give it away. Thank you. This is Coach Gary with uh, Go to Movement GLS Training. Tell them where to find you on social media and all. Uh, you can find me on social media at OB underscore the number one, the letter N, and only. Uh, Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, you name it. I'm on Everywhere. It. I'm on it. And I'm at GLS Gota. 
underscore training. You could get information with GLS Gota underscore education. That's Ricky's page, gotamovement.com. And um, this is Recoded, the podcast Recoded with Gary Scheffler, and we out of here.